the dream of flying with one leg and one prosthetic. This man lives it. Long jumper, Paralympics winner, world champion, Marcus Rehm lost his leg as a teenager in a wakeboard accident. I knew in the hospital I wanted to get back on the board and did it a year later. Spectacular tricks on the water. Unbelievable performances at the long jump pit. The face of the Paralympic movement. World record holder, 8 meters 48, with a prosthesis. This would have earned him gold at the last three Olympic Games against all non-disabled opponents. Who's helping who? I don't know. But the point is that the technology in prosthetics is really incredible. Hardly anybody on this planet is able to jump further than the one-legged man from Germany. His sports prosthesis, the result of a long journey. The history of prosthetics. It begins in Egypt with the daughter of a priest, buried with highest honors around 800 BC. When examining the mummy, scientists at the University of Manchester are amazed. An artificial toe made of wood and leather. So it's not a surprise to find that this burial of this elite woman in Egypt, it was important to the society that wanted to honor her that she was buried as whole and entire as possible, even with her prosthetic toe. The toe, not just a burial object. Traces of use show that the priest's daughter used it while walking around the temples. To look at the Cairo toe, you know, a wooden prosthetic, um, that that was functional as found by the team in the University of Manchester and that it was comfortable. The first written mention of a prosthetic leg about 300 years later, by the Greek poet Herodotus. Here, a seer amputates one of his legs and then makes one for himself out of wood. About the same time, at the other end of the world, in early Buddhist India, adulteresses are punished by having their noses cut off. The wealthy replace them with prostheses. Instead of the nose, pieces of wood are attached. Then skin is pulled from the forehead over the wound until everything grows together and heals. This is also the birth of plastic surgery. Those who can't afford these painful but aesthetic prostheses have to make do with very simple versions. One of the early prosthetics was these replacement noses, but they were only made out of materials like clay or wax, very basic. Prosthetics from another world. In the 300 years before year zero, wooden prostheses spread independently of each other worldwide, as shown by finds in Chinese and European graves. Roman war heroes who lose body parts wear prostheses if they survive. Generally speaking, in Roman culture, certainly pre-Christian Roman culture, it was more common to burn the dead rather than it was to bury them. That might account for the, the rare survival of prostheses from the Roman era. Roman prostheses made of wood have been burnt or long since decayed. Only one with bronze elements can be scientifically investigated. It was discovered around 200 kilometers from Rome in Capua. It resembles the leg splints that were common at the time. However, it's not clear just how practical it was. It's hard to imagine what wearing this leg would have been like. You know, even with the wood in the middle, all that bronze is gonna make it incredibly heavy. I, I can't imagine that would have been a comfortable experience. Wood, a material still used to build prostheses today. Near London, probably the most extraordinary replacement body parts in the world are produced for people for whom a classic prosthesis is not enough. Some people want one that's just, you know, looks exactly like their leg previously did, just to make it look as natural as possible. But other people really embrace the weirdness and choose something that looks sci-fi or just plain bizarre. Sophie de Oliveira Barata 
An artist studied special effects or wanted to go into film. Then she came across the silicone technique. This is how her path to prosthetics begins. I started thinking while I was working there, well, if I could, you know, what would I want? And if I was an amputee, and maybe I wouldn't want to blend in with everyone else if I, if I could have something different to, um, yeah, embrace my, embrace my difference. Sophie creates art, lifelike prosthesis, prosthesis that look like tendrils, her imagination knows almost no bounds. Futuristic cyborgs. Unusual perspectives. Luxury. Every piece, a custom-made product. 